Racing 393 and a bit of an impromptu video to be honest. I've um, recently purchased another um, rail controlled car project and this time we've gone down the Kyosho route. Um, uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the buggies, not too much because I haven't done as much research. Um, I'm not sure whether it's of that importance um, to be honest with you. So this is a um, Kyosho Inferno MP5. Uh, the MP5, MP6, pretty much the same car. There's a few subtle differences. Uh, wheelbase, um, uh, I think the rear arms are slightly, some think it's slightly wider. Uh, but apart from that, they're pretty much the same. Now these these came out um, again. I'm kind of I have read it, but I've, it's not going to be too factual for the video here. Um, but they came out roughly kind of mid ninety three to mid nineties, ninety three I think. So early nineties we shall we shall say. Now I can remember these coming out back when I used to have my other rare control cars and I could never ever afford one of these. These, when they first come out, I can remember it in the um, model car magazine of seeing figures of 9999. I mean I can remember seeing that and I could be wrong, it might not have been this particular model, but these are one eighth, um, the bigger sort of the big boy stuff as you were, these are what kind of if you were taking this hobby very seriously and travelled around the world, amongst other things, this would be one of the classes you would do. So as time's gone on, they still make this model. Um, MP10, I think now they're up to now, I think 7.5, 9. You know, there's there's all different variations of this model. Um, so this one uh, is based on uh, just a four-wheel drop sorry i've I'm, I'm got a bit distracted then uh, a bit of a four-wheel drive buggy and this one's got a 0.28 um, engine in now let me just i'm going to move the camera i'm not going to zoom in too close because i think it does go out of focus a little bit which is a bit annoying um so we've got there we've got a typical um fully adjustable front suspension uh wishbone up and at the bottom upper and lower on both fairly heavy duty sort of build to the car and um, this is a fairly standard to be honest stock version of it there's nothing to uh, trick there at all now when I got the car it had it had a servo in there but apparently the servo didn't work uh, I did try it and the servo did work but it was only like what they call like a, a six kilogram servo so um, I've put one of my 20 kilogram servos in it works absolutely fine um, there's the uh, throttle and in the back there you've got where all the electrics are I've put my own uh, receiver in there it's got a switch got batteries at the bottom it's also got a fail safe so if the car does go out of range or loses range loses con um, connection for example doesn't shoot off at untold miles per hour into something I mean these are fairly heavy I mean these probably weigh about two kilos or more I haven't put it on scales, I should have done, but I haven't. Um, as you zoom around to the back of the car, under the, oh, under the wing, same again, I'm putting lower wishbones, uh, anti roll bar on the back this time, um, nice hefty shock absorbers, which plenty of travel on there. Uh, we come back round and go into the engine. So, I don't know a lot about these engines, I must admit. But this is a, I, I was told, I, I can't remember, as, as a man, but it's a 0 0.28, 0 0.28 cc, which most of these, if you think most nitro cars, of like off the shelf cars, if you like, um, 0 0.12, 0 0.15, 0 0.21, if you've got something fairly hefty, 
this is point 28 but this is an aftermarket engine um, the engine that came with the kit I've got and I'll show you that in a minute so it's got a nice um, exhaust manifold uh, at the moment the exhaust is sort of pointing up the outlet part um, that needs to be adjusted um, it is pull start but it can be used on a starting block as well um, I just want to show you something it's a bit annoying so I'm going to remove the air filter just sort of pushed on for a minute so you can see we go, we've got the carb slide carb it's got typical adjustments on there as you would a normal carburetor it's quite a big ball actually to be honest and the important bits here in the middle that's kind of the center diff now there's a diff at one end which is in there somewhere and there's a diff there as well um, pretty sure that I think I've got, I don't, I'm not sure it's probably got a proper name I can't really think of it off the top of my head but center diff that might even be it now that came with that that gear there was stripped on the one uh, when it, I bought the car and I knew that and this that was supplied as a replacement so I replaced that a bit fiddly getting all that in and the, all the brake linkage has been disconnected I, I've got all the bits and I realize I kind of understand roughly how it works but I've got to remove some bits because as I don't know if you can see but down there don't want to zoom in too much it does come out of focus one of the linkages got sort of caught down there I can't get it out so I've got to take the center diff out again which I'm going to have to do anyway because that's the fuel filter uh, fuel tank even that's the fuel filter now I've got the engine loose at the moment so I haven't got it butted up and meshed up against the gear but you can see that it will move a little bit forward but not enough so it doesn't quite fit and the guy said he thought you had the mesh wrong um, maybe but I can see that that should at least have a bit more meat on the bone now you can't move the pinion other than move the engine forward which it's at its well, it's not at its furthest point the next step up if you like is too far so that's kind of where to run now that is a bit annoying um, I'm reluctant to run it like that to be honest um, but the, the, the diff if you like it's kind of really nice and smooth there's no resistance there at all the other, the other problem I found which I'd, I've got to look into this this center shaft here front shaft it's got a lot of I don't know if you see that the fat banana hands in the way um, let's move that out again it kind of I want to show you but it moves almost comes out of the cup yeah look you can see that that pin you can see that is almost out that's surely too much I'm aware that the shafts are different lengths and the back one doesn't move that much it's got a bit of play in it I'm assuming looking at the distance between the back of the gear the center shaft uh, sorry center diff it, it's longer on the back than the front and that's a shorter shaft so I'm not sure what to do I think I've got an idea but they can be packed out um, so that's got to be done um, just some cosmetic and respray the wing it's got it should have some washers underneath that because it is loose I can get them that's not a problem uh, tires I've got new tires and wheels upstairs these are just sort of knackered bald ones which will be right to start to use it and start with when I get around to it so I'm going to do the right I'm going to sort of look at the the play in the front drive shaft today and the engine which I'll leave on to now and come around to this move this car around a little bit and I'll move this one over hopefully uh, you can see that so this is the engine my understanding is it came with the kit when it was purchased from new and the guy said to me that it doesn't turn over well I've, I've stripped it down and look at it the pull start doesn't work very well so I've got to get a starter box but it's not seized very clean inside actually um, the only thing I haven't taken off is the exhaust manifold because I've got to get a special uh, tool um, I did have one for my karting days so it's a bit bigger so I need to get that 
this is a point this is a Rossi I don't really know much about what's what um, and this is a 0 0.15 or 0 0.18 I don't really know I should know I can't remember now but you can see what I'm going to try and do is fit this on and to see whether or not the, the pinion kind of mates against the spur gear or the main gear near the gearbox. I see, keep saying gearbox, centre center diff. Um, so yeah, I've got I've cleaned this up yesterday. Um, I mean, I'm impressed. This is how the, the, sli the slide carb. Um, you can see, you know, it's, but it works. Well. See that? Let me try. So you can kind of move it in and out. I'm not sure if you can see down there of it moving. A bit awkward with the camera as well. But yeah, that works really well. Quite like that. It's all adjustable on there with this sort of the um, got tick over and the main jet. So this one here, my understanding is that holds the um, sliding where it where it is. You, when you want to do that, that kind of pivots around. I'm not sure that does. There, um, as I was saying, it's got like um, if you can see there, I'm pointing. That keeps the, the slide in its right place, angle. You've got that one at the end. It must be low running because that 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 adjusts the needle that's in there. Anything. So my guessing is that's low running, not a cart. I'm trying to think now. And the other one, which is here, that's kind of the main jet. I could be wrong. I don't know if it's called main jet or they're just high high speed running, higher revs. So once then that's like pickup and low revs, because that's where the outtake is that's where the um, outlet is for uh, the fuel pipe that's where it'll go in main going there and you would adjust that up and down for the normal running um, yeah that's about it really so I I'm gonna put this one on today I'm gonna see how that goes um, and go from there really uh, there's not much else I can say about the car but I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it running and do some sort of running videos these are supposed to be reasonably quick. I'm reliably informed that this engine really puts up, but I'm a bit concerned that it's not meshing properly, hence why it stripped the gear in the first place. So, either get some different engine blocks it sits on, um, which I'll have a look at. If it had a few more, well, I don't know if you can see down there, but you can see where it sort of fits on an engine block. There's one on the side, it's got some holes. Two, two holes sort of fit the engine to the block. Engine, I should say engine mount. I say block. It's an engine mount. So the engine mount has like it's got, it's got about four holes on it. Well, it will go forwards that next hole, but it puts the bell housing, sort of the uh, clutch bell housing, too far over, and it's, it doesn't mesh the other way. So it sort of kind of could do with another one of them halfway between the two. Then it would fit right. It would then also take the manifold. Oops, let's just move over there. The sort of exhaust manifold away from the anti-roll bar. So it, you can see it does want to go forward a bit, and there is room. Um, that gear can't go back because it's in a little slot there. Look, so it's kind of where it needs to be. It's just the engine. So I'm going to put the other one in to see where that sits. Um, probably use the other one for now. And go from there. So that's it. That's my um, Kyosho Inferno MP6. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And I shall see you on the next video. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.